Ladies and gentlemen, fellow St. Lucians, Energy Awareness Month, celebrated every year during the month of November, brings into sharp focus energy issues of national importance. It is also an opportunity to review the progress we have made towards transitioning our energy sector to a more sustainable energy pathway. Importantly, the public is actively engaged during this time as we collectively plan and program our future development, recognizing that issues surrounding energy influence our economic and social development. The theme for this year's observance of Energy Month is From Dependence to Resilience, Fueling Our Recovery with Sustainable Energy. This theme was developed by CARICOM to capture a range of issues and opportunities surrounding the need for resilience building against climate-related disasters and how we recover from economic shocks, especially due to pandemics such as COVID-19, through the adoption of sustainable energy in various sectors. In retrospect, 2021 has inherited many of the challenges from last year. These challenges are not restricted to the energy sector, but our economy and society at large. The global COVID-19 pandemic is by far having the greatest impact of all of them. Within the energy sector, we observed a general decrease in electricity consumption as a result of the imposition of confinement measures, state of emergency, curfew period, coupled with an overall decrease in activity within our productive sectors. With the gradual reopening of the country and recommencement of activity, demand in the energy sector is increasing and stabilizing. Luslec must be commended for retaining all of its staff during this very difficult period of COVID-19 and placing a halt on disconnection of accounts in arrears. On the global scene, the price of oil is steadily increasing. This is due to the continued effects of the pandemic through disruptions in the supply chain and increased costs of shipping and associated logistics. These high prices will eventually spill over with reflections in the prices we pay for fuel at the pumps and electricity. The cost of various food items is increasing slightly due to this very same reason. The rising price of oil underscores our need to continue along the path of transitioning our energy sector towards greater integration of indigenous renewable energy resources. In this regard, I would like to reiterate government's commitment to reform the electricity sector, to reduce or stabilize energy costs and ensure energy independence through increased adoption of renewable energy and energy efficiency. There's an urgent need to transition our energy with these three prompted approaches, service reliability, cost containment, and energy independence. For this year's celebrations, we have organized activities that require minimal interaction and very little physical contact. The public is expected to take advantage of the opportunities presented to learn about sustainable energy and to win some very attractive prizes. Some of the activities to be hosted include a very interesting home energy challenge, which is aimed at engaging households in practical situations to help reduce the electricity costs and help promote energy efficiency and energy conservation. A webinar series highlighting the challenges and importantly, the opportunities and possible innovations for overcoming and recovery from such challenges using a sustainable energy approach will be held. Our month-long program will also include panel discussions on sustainable 
and renewable resources. Let me now highlight some key achievements and to mention some plans of the government and other important stakeholders within the energy sector. The World Bank has approved our renewable energy sector development project that will see exploratory drilling for commercially viable geothermal resource, along with assistance for the necessary regulatory framework and technical assistance to the tune of 21 million US dollars. We have received from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development approval for a loan of US $15 million to be granted to the St. Lucia Electricity Services Limited Looselec for the establishment of a 10 megawatt solar farm in Trumase Miku with battery storage capacity of seven megawatt hours. The United Arab Emirates Caribbean Renewable Energy Fund is supporting the establishment of a solar carport with electric vehicle charging capacity and solar street lighting at the Hionora International Airport. On the various initiatives by the government, solar PV systems have been installed on a number of schools, namely Chazelle Secondary, Bogis and Forestier Combined Schools, and the Viewfort Campus B. The government recognizes the importance of institutional, technical, and human resource development as a critical element in our energy transition, and for this reason, facilitated the training and certification of 15 mechanics in electric hybrid vehicle repair and replacement, together with 34 professionals from the private and public sector in leadership in energy and environment design lead all receiving Green Associate accreditation. A batch of 39 professionals have been trained in solar PV installation towards the attainment of the National American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners PV Associate certification for installers and inspectors. We are working closely with LUSLEC to explore wind energy to the capacity of 18 megawatts. This year, through the Global Environment Facility and also through a regional initiative being supported by the government of Germany, the government of St. Lucia will make much needed interventions in the area of transportation. This exercise will see the electrification and decarbonization of St. Lucia's transport sector. We are soon to complete the legislative framework for the reform of the energy sector and further empower the National Utilities Regulatory Commission, the NUC, to effectively provide oversight of the sector in the interests of economy and efficiency. The challenges that we currently face are immense and the post-COVID-19 environment amplifies this. It is therefore incumbent on us to combine our individual efforts into a collective force by bringing together the private sector, civil society, utilities, regulator, and government to foster the change that is needed. We must pool our resources and converge in purpose to ensure that as a nation, our energy sector and economy continues to meet the needs of all. As the old African axiom would put it, you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Let us therefore go together as a nation to observe November as Energy Awareness Month. I thank you.